Hello and welcome to AirgunWeb.com. My name is Rick Utzler and I'm glad you've chosen to take some time with us as we look at the Ruger Air Magnum. Now the Ruger Air Magnum is another entry into the Hypervelocity 177 arena and it currently sells for about $166 at Pyramid Air. It's a clone of the RWS 350 Magnum with at least one significant design upgrade. Let's take a close up look at this rifle. At about $166, the Ruger Air Magnum certainly hits the target price-wise. It's a very traditional brake barrel that is composite in steel. The stock is ambidextrous and does not sound hollow during shooting. Ruger updated the old 11mm dovetail with a much needed weaver style mounting system. This works much better and keeps your optics rock steady on the rifle. For those of you who like traditional open sights, you're in luck. The Ruger has a nice set of fiber optic sights with a fully adjustable rear sight. Now Ruger included a 4x32 scope which was pretty worthless. It was basically unusable for this review. So I pulled the center point scope from my Benjamin trail and dropped it on the weaver mount. That was easy. Given a preference, I would prefer to use leapers which I believe just has a better sight picture. Now the trigger assembly on the Air Magnum is a copy of the RWS T05 trigger and it's a very nice fit for this rifle. It has some adjustability and allows you to tweak it to your preference. The Air Magnum is not bad at all for a rifle under $170. Let's talk a little bit about performance. With these big springers, folks are looking at basically one thing, and that's velocity. Personally, I prefer accuracy over velocity, but speed sells, and so manufacturers keep pushing and pushing to have the fastest rifle on store shelves. Now, Ruger states that the Air Magnum has an up to velocity of 1,400 feet per second. To achieve these high numbers, they use lead-free pellets, which are much lighter than the average lead pellet. Now, many people use Gamo's PBA ammo, which is visibly deficient and generally very inaccurate. To test the maximum velocity of this rifle, I chose to use the H&N Field Target Trophy green pellets, which are noticeably more uniform, better made, and have proven to be more accurate in my tests. Here are my results. Using the H&N Field Target Trophy green pellets, they're lead free and they weigh 5.56 grain. We had a high of 1,326 feet per second, a low of 1,287 feet per second, an average of 1,307 feet per second, an extreme spread of 39 feet per second, and a standard deviation of 11 feet per second. The maximum energy we achieved was 21.7 foot-pounds and the sound level out of the rifle using those pellets was 119 dB. That is quite loud. Now when you move to a standard lead pellet the Ruger states that it has an up to velocity of 1200 feet per second. To test this I use the RWS hobby pellets which are my standard and they are a 7 grain lead pellet. Here are my results with the RWS hobbies a 7 grain lead pellet. We had a high of 1168 feet per second, a low of 1133 feet per second, an average of 1150 feet per second, an extreme spread of 35 feet per second, with a standard deviation of 10 feet per second. The maximum energy we achieved was 21.2 foot pounds, and these pellets generated a sound level of 117 dB. The lower velocity changed the loudness of the rifle just slightly. Lastly, our most accurate pellet was the H&N Barracuda Match at 10.65 grain. This pellet got the velocity just under the sound barrier, which is generally much better for accuracy. Here were my results. Now this was the Barracuda Match, 10.65 grain. We had a high of 1,019 feet per second, a low of 1,003 feet per second, an average of 1,012 feet per second, an extreme spread of 16 feet per second, standard deviation of 5 feet per second, and our maximum energy we achieved was 24.5 foot-pounds. It also greatly reduced the sound level 
down to a manageable 190 dB. As you can see from that last set of numbers, the Barracuda match pellets not only gave us more consistent velocities and a much tighter standard deviation, but they also dropped the sound level from the extreme high of 119 dB down to only 109, just slightly higher than most standard brake barrel rifles. The energy was also greater due to the increased mass of the pellets. Shooting these very heavy pellets over 1,000 feet per second accurately is really something else. The Ruger Air Magnum uses a standard brake barrel design. One cock compresses the spring and sets the trigger. It also engages the automatic safety. You simply load a pellet in the breech, close the gun, go ahead and sight the gun, take the safety and put it in the firing position, and gently squeeze the trigger. Now the Air Magnum is not an easy gun to shoot. It's heavy, and it has a tremendously violent recoil. It punishes you for every tiny flaw in your technique. The only way to get decent groups with the Air Magnum is to practice the artillery hold until you can master it with complete consistency. Here's how that works. The first thing I do is find the balance point of the rifle. Okay, This is usually just in front of the trigger guard. Resist the urge to grab the gun too far forward. Also, resist the urge to try and control the gun's recoil. You just can't, so don't try. With your shooting hand, grip the stock and find a comfortable shooting position for both your trigger finger and the thumb. This is very critical. Even a change in this thumb position will change your point of impact. It's also important to control your breathing. I don't try and force the shot. I allow the sight picture to move with me and slowly but surely it calms down and gets more steady as I relax into the shot. Once I have the sight picture I want and it's not moving around with my breathing, then I take a breath, squeeze the trigger right at the top of my breath, which I hold for as long as it takes for the shot to complete. This is called follow through. Now, follow through. If you've ever shot black powder, you should know about follow through. You need to hold your position throughout the entire shot process. It's like playing golf. If you pull your head up to see what a great shot you just made, you'll find it heading off into the trees. By maintaining your hold and allowing the full shooting cycle to complete, you'll see much more consistent shot groups. This is how it works. You find the balance point of the rifle, get your stance, get your grip, just sort of relax into the shot. Now that you know a bit about the artillery hold, you need to go practice. This technique works with virtually any spring gun, and you can really improve your accuracy from the bench as well as out in the field. One final point to remember, the more powerful the rifle, generally the more violent the recoil. The more violent the recoil, the more important it is to have a consistent hold, trigger control, and follow through. Practice is going to be the key to success. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these groups. The first group is at 25 yards and the second group is at 50 yards. You'll see that the shots really start to spread out at 50 yards.
first let's look at the cons. The Air Magnum is quite heavy and the bundle optics are really a joke which means you'll be looking for a new scope right away. This also may negate that attractive price point somewhat. The rifle is exceptionally loud because even standard weight lead pellets break the sound barrier. Now a copy is not the real thing and while Ruger did a pretty decent job making an RWS 350 Magnum for the masses it's still not an RWS 350 Magnum. Let's talk about the pros for this rifle. This rifle comes very close to meeting its velocity claims and with the right pellet it can be very accurate inside 40 yards delivering more power than the average 22 caliber air gun. The new Weaver style scope rail is a real advantage and will keep whatever optics you choose to use on the rifle rock steady. While not for everyone, this rifle is going to appeal to a lot of people just because of the raw power it can generate. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. The Ruger Air Magnum is a big powerful rifle that delivers more energy on target than most 22 break barrel rifles. Now all of that power comes at a cost however of both accuracy and ease of use. At $166 from Pyramid Air, even if you added my favorite Leaper scope, the 3 to 9 by 40 AOMDIR, and a hard shell case, you're only looking at a final price of about $260, well under the $460 price tag of the RWS 350 Magnum Striker combo. Now, if this were my rifle, the first thing I'd do would be to tear it down, clean it, and give it a real good tune up. This should help the shooting characteristics by making it easier to shoot, quieter, and just generally better all around. The Ruger Air Magnum is decent out of the box, but may prove to be exceptional with a little TLC and a lot of practice. I'd like to take a moment and thank the folks at Pyramid Air for sending us this rifle and for sponsoring this review. When you're looking for your next air rifle or your next batch of supplies, please point your browser to www.pyramidair.com. They really have been an incredible bunch of folks to work with, and I appreciate all the support that they've given me over the past several years. Until next time, this is Rick Usler with airgunweb.com. Thanks again for spending some time with us today.